Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our Sunday Worship Online Experience. My name is Pastor Love Socking, and thanks for joining us today. Can you believe that it's been over a month since we started the quarantining procedures for our state and our country and really the whole world? Think about how much our world has changed over these past 34 days to be exact. Schools have closed and gone to remote learning methods. Parents are now homeschooling their children and trying to work from home at the same time. Restaurants and eateries have closed completely or have continued or been forced to do delivery or curbside pickup. Places of worship, including our church, are closed and have stopped in-person worship gatherings. And now we have been using online methods of worship gathering for five Sundays in a row. The last time we met together in person at Brookdale was Sunday, March the 15th. Hard to believe. And more importantly, most of us know someone or family member who has someone who has contracted the COVID-19 virus, has been hospitalized, or worse, has died as a result of the COVID-19 virus. Many of us, just like you, including myself, this week have known people that have passed away. That have died due to the complications of the coronavirus. It's tragic, it's terrible, it's heart-wrenching, it's just awful. And it's been so difficult for, for me, for people I know, for you too. We're all in this together in the same boat. 
Whether we like it or not, we are now in a new world. That means that as Christians, our faith is the same, but our methods of spreading the gospel and ministering God's word to those in need must change. And when we get to some form of normalizing in our society's everyday experiences, things cannot simply go back to how things were. Hopefully, we will learn to live out our faith in Jesus Christ in fresh, new ways as we come into this new normal. I want you to take your copy of God's Word, and I want us to look at the Scriptures. And as we are now Sunday, after Easter Sunday, and hopefully you joined us for our Easter Sunday celebration last week, or enjoyed your Easter in another way, we want now to look forward. And look at the scriptures and look at Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And see what the Lord can teach us now a week after Easter. And see what he's challenging us to do in this post-Easter experience. So Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. But please follow in your copy of God's Word also. It says, So when the, the apostles were with Jesus... They kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Isn't that amazing, that passage? As Jesus is preparing to, to leave and ascend into heaven, he spends some time with his apostles, and he talks to them and gives them some final instructions. And there are just a few observations that I had as I was studying this passage for this, this Sunday message. First of all, as people, we tend to look beyond our present situation and don't focus on where God has us now. Isn't that so true, right? Look, as we see here in verse 6, we see that the apostles are asking, and say, Lord, has a time come for you to free Israel and to restore our kingdom? You know what was motivating them? It wasn't necessarily spiritual. I think it was very much politically driven. Those were their thoughts, right? When When is the freedom of our country going to happen? Remember. Israel was under Roman rule at that time and oppression, and they wanted to be free of it. And they wanted to have their own autonomous country and kingdom once again. So even the disciples, as they were asking Jesus this question, it was more politically motivated than spiritual. And then isn't that how you and I tend to be sometimes too? I'm sure as you've been watching the news and listening to the different pundits and all the newscasts, and even the presidential uh, reports that we see every day, and our, our state governors are reporting in different ways about what's going on, what is the plan. It can be maddening and really take our eyes off what's most important. Not saying that that knowledge and those news stories and that data is not important, but you and I as Christians are made beyond this world, right? We are made to live beyond what is going on just now. And so we have to have not just uh, political motivations, not just physical motivations, but spiritual motivations. And the other observation that I see here is that Jesus responded to his disciples in how they were not focused on what was truly important. Jesus always responds to our presumptions and gives us divine correction. Look at, look at verse 7. It's amazing how Jesus responds. Jesus replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. Jesus is great. He never pulls a punch, does he? He says, Look, only God the Father knows the answer to those questions, which are really are not the right questions to ask. Right? And they are not for you to know. No, in a world 
so much knowledge access at our fingertips especially these days there's newscasts going 24 hours a day seven days a week right for the last month or more about our situation with this whole coronavirus that it's easy for us to make presumptions ask the wrong questions of god but god always corrects us it says look it's not for you to know the times you and i want to know the times of when this is going to end right when is this virus going to end? When is it going to plateau and decline? When are people around me going to, going to stop suffering, getting sick and die? When am I going to get back to my job? When am I going to be able to have the money to pay for my apartment, for my mortgage, for my car payments, right? When's that stimulus check going to hit my bank account, right? Not bad questions. When we need to be asking them, but Jesus is saying to us today, Christian, we need to ask better questions. And some of these are for not for not for us to know right now. They'll be revealed in time, right? Only God knows. Only God the Father knows. And we need to trust Him. So we shouldn't be focused on things we can't ultimately know. But we need to focus on God and what he has before us. And you know what's great? A third observation that, I, that I've seen here is that Jesus always gives us a divine mission to follow. And you know, our mission is very clear, and we're going to talk about it right now. In verse 8, he says it to his apostles, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's an amazing image there that Jesus gave, and a mission. He first gave them this fact that you're going to receive power, power not of yourselves, but power through the Holy Spirit who he had already promised them throughout the Gospels towards the end, during the Lord's Supper, when he was about to be betrayed. Right? He said, I'm going to provide you and give you the Holy Spirit when I leave physically, I'm going to give you my spirit who's going to be with you and teach you, convict the world of sin, and to be able to encourage you and even pray for you when you don't know what to pray. He's going to give you power, right? You're going to receive power from the Holy Spirit, and you're going to become my witnesses. Really, the word there is you're going to give testimony about what you've seen and about what my message is, and you're going to share it not just in Jerusalem, not just in the next ring of Judea, not just in the next ring outside of that, Samaria, but beyond that to the ends of the world. And you know what, friend? That's the same mission for you and I today, to share the gospel within our communities, to our region, to people around us that we never thought, and even to the ends of the world. That's our mission but we don't do it on our own power. We do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the 18th century French philosopher Voltaire was the first one to coin this phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. And you and I have been given great power through the Holy Spirit, as promised. And so we have a responsibility, an amazing responsibility, to share the gospel to express to the world, to people in all our rings of experience, that Jesus is alive. You know, if there's anything that you remember from this message, it's this, really. That no matter how life situations change, our divine mission is still the same. Share the gospel message using whatever methods and opportunities the Lord gives to us. We live in a unique and unusual times. And years from now, we're going to look back on it. Are we going to look back with regret? Knowing that there were opportunities to share the gospel in fresh new ways. Or are we going to look back and remember that this was the time that God did something special in my life, in the lives of people around me, in my family, in my friend group, and we were able to reach the ends of the world because of what we experienced in 2020. How should we then live now and plan for the future as we are now past Easter Sunday, which was just last Sunday, and continue to live in our new world of reality? How should we then live? Well, here's just a few thoughts to help you 
and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. First of all, embrace new ways to spiritually connect to the Lord. You know, Psalm 119, 113 says, How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. You know, is God's word and being in his presence so sweet, so savory, so wonderful that you desire to find new and fresh ways to experience him? You know, there's nothing wrong with reading a physical Bible. But you know what? You and I can read the Bible anywhere because of technology on our phones, on our computers, on our tablets. It's amazing what God's Word can do in our lives. And if we truly love His Word, then we should try to connect with Him by reading His Word in fresh new ways. We have so much accessibility to different versions and translations of God's Word, different commentaries, different books, different pastors and, and preachers talking about His Word that can enrich our lives and connect us in new and fresh ways during this time. You know, maybe you actually have, like most of us, more time on your hands, and there's only so much time you can spend watching Netflix or Amazon Prime or the Disney Channel or whatever YouTube videos you like to watch or whatever you're on. Maybe you need to curb some of that. And you and I need to spend more time in the presence of God, reading His Word, praying, getting down on our knees and bowing our heads of our hearts and saying, God, we need you so much. Lord, I want your presence. I just want to feel your glory. In the midst of everything going on that's terrible, I want to experience your glory, God, and your presence. You know, the greatest new resources are the abundance of online worship services and sermons to watch. Me, personally, this week, I've watched two or three sermons alone just from Easter Sunday. And there's so many other videos out there that you and I could watch, other tools that are available that if we're willing to, if we want to enrich our relationship with the Lord and find a new spark to help us be connected to Jesus Christ, we can do it through some of these new techniques, these new links and opportunities that are right at our fingertips. But also, secondly, we can develop new ways to connect to people around us and share the gospel in powerful ways. You know, in 1 Corinthians 9, 22-23, it says, When I am with those who are weak, this is the Apostle Paul, I share in their weaknesses, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. The Apostle Paul was trying to find common ground with people. And what better common ground than the situations that we're all experiencing and are in? So many people have been searching online. The stats are showing that people are looking for online churches. People are looking for people to post different messages of hope and inspiration, right? And so you and I should be, as the Apostle Paul, to find common ground with everyone, doing everything we can to save some. That might mean using uh, different technological tools like Zoom, doing Zoom video conference calls or Skype video conference calls, or on our phones, if you have an iPhone, FaceTime, or texting, or voice messaging, or the WhatsApp, right? There's so many different opportunities to use technology to connect using the common ground, the commonalities that we now have of being in the same boats together, same experiences of suffering and, and anxiety and worry and fear, and using the technology that we have around us to share. Or maybe just connect using the old tech right? Calling using our phones, right? Writing a letter, sending an email, right? These are ways that you and I can share and connect to people around us. You know, it's interesting to see all the screenshots as I look on social media of churches and offices, friends and families that are using these video interfaces and video conference calls to stay connected. If they can do it, certainly you and I can do the same. But also, you and I need to share the gospel 
primarily. That's our mission right there, to share the gospel using the resources you and I have right now. 2 Corinthians 5.20, just as a reminder, says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, Come back to God. That's our mission. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you did not know what our mission is as believers, that's it. As Jesus said to his own disciples before he ascended into heaven, he was going to give them power by the Holy Spirit so that they could be witnesses, ambassadors to tell everyone everywhere about him. That's our mission, right? And we're his ambassadors representing him in how we live what we say, what we do, what we do with this time while we're in quarantine and sheltering situations, right? We can still be clear ambassadors speaking and calling people back to God. How can we do that? Well, well, maybe share this church sermon that you're listening to right now in this worship gathering and share this video or a worship song link to someone online. Maybe just copy and paste that in your browser, in your laptop, or in your phone, and just text that to someone. Share your own video post or message on your social media or website. You know, it's kind of scary to get in front of your own phone and take a short video and give a message of inspiration or testimony. But I want to encourage you to do that, church, to be brave. If you're not someone that likes to post or you think that's not for you, this could be an opportunity for you to share a message to go on the YouVersion Bible app and take a Bible verse that you've read and, and place it into one of the uh, backgrounds and then share that as a photo of inspiration on your social media, on your website. And maybe just text it to someone just as a form of encouragement from you to them. People want to hear your testimony about what God is doing in your life, especially during this difficult time. Or again, maybe just call someone you know who isn't a Christian and share the gospel message. Do it in a video call. Do it with a regular phone call. You and I are called to share the gospel, no matter what kind of situation. As the Apostle Paul said to the, to the young pastor Timothy, to preach, to be ready to preach in season and out of season. And maybe you feel like you're out of season. Jesus is saying, this is the season to preach God's word, and it's always in season to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Pastor Charles Stanley, one of the most revered pastors of our time, he writes this about sharing the gospel. God's plan for enlarging his kingdom is so simple. One person telling another about the Savior. Yet, we're busy and full of excuses. Just remember, someone's eternal destiny is at stake. The joy you'll have when you meet that person in heaven, will far exceed any discomfort you felt in sharing the gospel. What's your excuse for not sharing the gospel message during this time of sheltering and quarantine? This unique time that you and I have been chosen by God to live in. What's your excuse? Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're you're isolated and well, the pastor love, I'm not allowed to go outside my house. You know, right? Well, that's fine. Stay in your house. But you and I have opportunities using technology and even old technology. Make a phone call. Send an email. Write a letter. Send a card. You and I can still share the gospel message with the people around us in our inner circle, in our neighborhood, in our communities, throughout the world. We have the opportunity, my friends. Let's take the opportunities that God has placed before us now and let's be brave and venture into a new world that he is leading us into. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's pray together. Lord, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ who are part of our, our church here at Brookdale or who may be guests who are just listening in, maybe they just happen to stumble upon this sermon this Sunday and this link. My simple prayer is that we would follow your divine mission of testifying about you to everyone everywhere, not by our strength, but through the strength 
and the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within each of us who call upon your name. And God, I just pray for those that might be watching and aren't Christians, and I just pray that they would have a heart and a desire to know you in a real way, to have eternal life, meaning having a relationship with you and having you within their soul, within their hearts. Understanding that Easter Sunday, which was last week, is all about the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, died so that we wouldn't have to pay the penalty for our sins, but rose again after three days being in the tomb and was raised to new life through the power of God the Father so that we could have guaranteed a hope of eternal life knowing you now and after this life. Lord, I just pray for those that may be watching that don't know you, that they would choose to follow you today by simply saying a prayer of faith and belief in you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Stop.